I mean, who doesn't like a good pasta dish? I know I do. I got seven of them for you. Let's get cooking. Hey, hey y'all, welcome back to this week's video. In this video, I have seven easy and delicious pasta recipes that you're not gonna wanna pass up. Some of them are even new to us. And trust me, you're going to want to try at least one of these, if not all. So let's get right on in to this week's video and go make some pasta. Come on, let's go. All right, y'all. So starting out, who don't like spaghetti? And that's what we're going to make. So I just got some ground beef right here. And I'm just going to caught it actually on manager special, which can't beat that either. So um, it was pretty good amount off like a dollar and a half or something like that so and then whatever kind of pasta sauce you want um we're just using the aldi brand the roasted garlic some tomato paste some diced tomatoes and of course you'll need some thick and zesty spaghetti mix and um, a beefy onion soup mix along with whatever kind of pasta you want we're just using the thin sketty right here but we're going to start off by seasoning um, up our burger meat right here i just use nature seasoning and cavenders and we're just gonna brown that one up once that's brown or once we get it mixed a little bit i'll add in some chopped onion i had them in the fridge so i didn't want it going bad i just went ahead and threw that on in there and then once the meat is brown we'll add in a whole can of just the tomato paste right there stir that on in together then dump in your maters give that a stir and then we will throw in our well, throw in <laughs> we'll dump in our pasta sauce right there give it a good old stir together and then i've also put in that beefy onion soup mix in there too and the mccormick seasoning i just forgot to film it let that simmer on low until your pasta is done and then you'll be ready to serve it on up this is so good y'all So this evening we are making some crock pot ravioli lasagna. This stuff is so good. This is um, courtesy of my sister-in-law. Um, she lives down Mississippi with my brother and this is her recipe. So I just started off with some frozen spaghetti sauce that I already had made and I just reheated it on it in my skillet. And then I've got mozzarella cheese, cheddar cheese, and some cheese um, ravioli, just the little circle ones because they taste the best. So in your grease crock pot, I just start out with a layer of sketty sauce at the bottom and we'll just dump a layer of ravioli on there with some mozzarella, some cheddar, and then we'll put the more sauce on it. And then we'll just repeat those layers until you get all the way up to the top of your crock pot. And as many layers as you can fit, that's what you want to do. So once you've got your last layer of ravioli, you'll cover it with sauce. And then, of course, top it off with some cheese. And um, on the top, I just do some cheddar. And then we'll put the lid on it and set it on low for six hours. Or you can do it on high for four hours. Here it is once it's all cooked up. This is so good, y'all, and so cheesy. And it is so filling. And it's so easy to make, um, but you definitely want to keep an eye on it. That way nothing burns on it. And look at that cheese pull, y'all. This is definitely a winner, winner pasta dinner right here. Now here's one I haven't made in a while. We're gonna make some shrimp alfredo pasta. So I've just got the um, little corkscrew pasta, some of the Rayo's alfredo dip. Um, this was the first time trying it and y'all it's really good, but the price of it, I think I'll stick to just making homemade. But for the convenience of it, we're using that tonight. So I just have some already cooked shrimp, um, the frozen one, and I just let that thaw out a little bit. We're gonna make some cheese garlic biscuits to go along with it, and let's get to making this. So starting out, I've just got some butter and some garlic in a pan right there, and basically we're just gonna saute those shrimp just enough to where 
that flavor gets through them because you don't want to overcook them since they've already cooked we're just heating them through so we're just going to toss it in that butter and garlic right there until they are ready to be mixed in with the sauce i'm going to go ahead and boil my noodles right there just to get them going as well and yes that's tea in the background because i think we go through a gallon of it every day <laughs> But I just dumped both of those jars of that Alfredo sauce in my skillet, let that heat on through, and then wait for my pasta to get done. And y'all, I'm going to tell y'all what, this was so good because I haven't made it in forever. So this definitely hit the spot this night. Um, I did put a little bit of, um, I think it was heavy cream in that jar of Alfredo to kind of like help that sauce get out of that jar because I don't want to waste not, want not around here. Um, I just showed you all those biscuits. I just put those in the oven and let them cook. Here, I'm tossing the noodles with some Parmesan cheese. I'm going to give that a good stir. Dump that Alfredo and shrimp mixture over the top of it. Stir it all up. And it gets all ooey gooey and cheesy and so, so good, y'all. So, I'm just going to go ahead and fix me on up a plate. Sit down and have some supper. All right, y'all, so this one was new to us. I just came up with it. I had been looking for some different recipes for some cheeseburger gnocchi. I could not find any, so I just come up with my own. I'll link my inspiration video down below for you or a recipe, and then if and when I ever get mine typed up, I will have it down below as well. But this is everything you're gonna need. So some diced tomatoes, whipped cream cheese, some bacon bits, ground beef, heavy whipping cream, of course, cheese of your kind, whatever you want, onions, some yolky, and of course, some beef broth. So first, what we're gonna do is go ahead and get this gnocchi browning according to all the recipes that I've seen, and I think it just gives it better flavor. So I've just got some butter and some um, seasonings here in my skillet, and you'll see me put the seasonings in in a minute. But we're just gonna brown this gnocchi on up until it gets nice and golden brown and crispy on all sides, um, just where you get that crisp and that flavor because it is going to be you know put into some sauce in a little bit but i've got that gnocchi all cooked up we're going to go ahead and pull that out of the skillet and that's when we're going to start browning the ground beef and putting all the yumminess into it so i put a little bit more butter in the bottom of that skillet i'm going to dice up that onion cook it on up and just to where it gets translucent and we're going to head and add in our ground beef chop that on up and add our seasonings into it whatever you want to put in it that's fine i just use some badia complete and i believe that was it and unless i put something else in there but i don't remember so we'll mix that on up add in some garlic there is our beefy onion soup mix our whole package of bacon bits yes i said the whole package <laughs> because it's bacon cheeseburger we're going to dump in that whole can of the diced tomatoes. I did drain those a little bit because you didn't want this to be too soupy. There is that can of beef broth. Um, I used a double package of gnocchi, so I used the whole can. If you're only going to make one, just use one or a half a can. So we added in that whipped cream cheese, gave it a stir, added in some heavy whipping cream as well. And then of course, it wouldn't be bacon cheeseburger without the cheese. So we stirred in that whole block of cheese right there. We're gonna give this a big old stir, add in our cooked gnocchi right here, and then you'll see me add in another one because it just didn't look like I had enough, so I browned up another pack. <laughs> you'll give that a good on stir and let that sit for a little bit and get all happy together. And then we're just gonna serve it on up in a bowl and that was supper this night. Now this was another new to us recipe. It's a Grecian chicken pasta. So you'll have to have some spinach, some artichoke hearts right here, some feta cheese, um, of course some butter, 
You will also need some chicken broth, sun-dried tomatoes, or roasted red peppers, um, Kalamata olives, some olive oil, some Bedia Complete. You'll need some Italian seasoning and parsley flakes along with some garlic. I have a quarter cup of water sitting here, some lemon, lemon zest, green onions, and of course your pasta, which I skipped right over, but we're using angel hair because this all cooks together. And there is my chicken breast that I already cut up. So this is a one skillet meal and I was a little bit worried about it and I'll explain to you why here in a little bit because everything cooks together, even the pasta. Um, if I make this again, which I will, I will make it different because it was just a little bit, the texture of it, um, it was good. The flavor was there, but the texture of it was weird because you had all that starch come out from the noodles. And that's what I was worried about. And honestly, I think that chicken needed to be browned up and then put in. So like I said, you can either try it as according to the recipe like I did. I always give a recipe a chance, but <laughs> next time I make it, I'm definitely going to change it up. So right here, I've got the garlic, the chicken broth, the chicken and the pasta, along with the sun-dried tomatoes in there. And I'm just going to let that cook on down. We're going to give that a good old stir. And then we're just going to keep adding everything in according to the recipe directions. Um, it wasn't bad. Like I said, it just wasn't one of my favorites. So in goes the artichoke hearts, the spinach right here. We're gonna give that a good stir. Bless you, Mason. So sorry. We're gonna give that a good old stir. And then we'll come back in and make sure, since that brought, or the spinach is cooked down a little bit, then we're gonna add in our olives right here. And then we'll put in, I believe it's the, lemon zest here in a minute and the green onions yeah there's the green onions there's the lemon zest we're going to come in with some of that olive oil and then some lemon juice to kind of finish this dish off with we'll give it a nice stir and then we're going to serve it on up but like i said this was really good just next time those were the things i would do to change it i hope y'all give this one a try All right, y'all, so we're going back to my roots right here. <laughs> we're gonna make my Tuscan chicken, but we're changing it up with the pasta because we're gonna make it a one pan dish with this um, tortellini that's in a bag. Um, you don't have to like cook it beforehand where it's frozen or anything, but here's everything you're gonna need to make this dish. Now let's get to cooking it because this one was amazing so starting off i'm just gonna brown my chicken on up i'll just put that all in a skillet we're gonna season it with some black garlic and some bidia complete right here and just brown it up cook it to it's an internal temperature of 160 degrees we'll take those little pieces of chicken on out and then that's when we're gonna start making the sauce for our tuscan chicken this one is so good. I hope y'all give it a try. So in that skillet, I just put in some of the Better Than Bouillon chicken in there. Give that a stir. Put in some water. Just about a cup and a half, not too much. We're going to add in that whole bag of tortellini, of course. And we're going to let that boil down until that water kind of, you know, cooks that pasta all the way through. And then we'll add in some heavy whipping cream which I already done. And then we'll add in that whole jar. Um, it was the small container of whipping cream. I'm not sure how many ounces it was, but we're going to give that a good old stir together. And then we're going to add in our broccoli. And of course y'all already know, I've already put that uh, garlic in there. Did I say broccoli again? We're going to put the spinach in here. My goodness gracious. Y'all can tell I wasn't feeling good yesterday. <laughs> We're going to let that spinach cook on down, and then once that has wilted all the way down, we'll add in a whole container of the shredded Parmesan cheese. We'll let that stir all together, and here it is all cooked up. Y'all, this was so good. All right, last but not least, we're gonna make my creamy ravioli bake. So I just had some frozen sketty sauce. I always try to keep some froze in the deep freezer. We've got a bag of ravioli here, some three cheese, um, Parmesan cheese, 
heavy whipping cream, minced garlic, and then some shredded parm, and of course, some mozzarella right here as well. What I'm gonna do is go ahead and get my sauce heated on up, and then we're gonna get a casserole dish and everything ready. But to start off, we're gonna make our own Alfredo sauce. So I've got a little bit of butter and some garlic in a pan. I'm gonna put a half a block of cream cheese in here, get all of that melted together, and then we're gonna slowly but surely add in our heavy whipping cream. I added in probably about a cup and a half to two cups. Once you get that stirred on in, you'll add in both of the Parmesan cheeses just until y'all think the flavor is correct. It's all on y'all's taste buds, however you like it. So once that's stirred in, you'll just add in your Badia Complete or whatever seasonings your little heart desires. That's what you put on in there. We'll give it a good old stir. Now it's time to start assembling this pasta dish. So spaghetti sauce in the bottom, we'll spread that on out and then we'll make a layer of a ravioli on there. Once you have the layer of ravioli, you'll go in with your um, shredded Parmesan cheese or grated Parmesan cheese. And then we will add some mozzarella to it and then we'll come in with our Alfredo sauce right here and just, you know, coat everything around. More spaghetti sauce, more ravioli, and then so on and so forth, so forth until you get to your top layer. And then you'll just cover it with cheese, of course, and some more of that um, cream sauce. And then you'll bake it at 350 until it's nice, golden brown, and bubbly. And here it is. Y'all, this was so good, and I threw this together last minute because I didn't know what to make for supper this night. But this one was definitely a winner. All right, y'all. So that finishes up this week's video. Thank you all so much for coming back. I truly appreciate every single one of y'all for taking the time out to come back and visit my little bitty channel. But I love each and every one of y'all, and I hope y'all at least give one of these a try. But until next time, my sweet friends, if you are in need of prayer, please let me know below. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up, leave me a comment below, and I will see y'all in the next one. God bless. Bye.